good to be back today, Foot Clan. We are going through all the free agency news that broke over the weekend and get my reactions to what happened last week, some crazy stuff. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, March 19th, Jason Moore is back in the building. I'm happy to be here. Thrilled to be here. Missed being here. We missed you. I know a lot of people wanted your reactions to truly some free agent madness. I mean, it was a busy year. Uh, yeah, I still is. I have, well, uh, I've caught back up on everything. I've, I've, you know, stayed in tune every yes. day. I was not just gone from the earth. No, and, you were there. You were tweeting about Justin Fields. Oh and, yeah. And, and, and as of this moment, I don't know who plays where. No, it's impossible to tell. Um, we don't know. Nobody here knows. Uh, we're, we're just rooting. You just draft uh wide receiver one for the Falcons. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, no mic today. Jay Grizz filling in. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about. Got more news that broke over the weekend. I'm going to force Jason to share his, uh, well, now now contemplative thoughts on the things that have happened. I mean, we, we were just reacting. Mike and I were here last week, and it was just boom, bam, like on the show live. I know you don't listen to the podcast. but No, I would never. Um, on the show live. Mike found out. The Derrick Henry news? Yeah, the Derrick Henry had signed with the team he wanted him to sign with. I did know that because where when the Derrick Henry news broke, I was watching the Slack channel while you guys were recording the show. Oh, okay. like, I'm like, yeah. oh, man, that's got to be a good moment. Oh, it, it, it was. Mike was very happy, very pleased. We had just got done. Literally, I went through every team in the NFL and whether or not – like I was trying to calm him down about poten potential destinations – and we just got through every team, and it happened right then. Uh, so, yeah, Derrick Henry in Baltimore, just one of many huge news stories. Before we jump in, I want to remind you, ultimatedraftkit.com. It's all updated, the UDK Plus, the Dynasty Pass. Get in there. Get the mobile app. I just updated uh, Dynasty startup rankings this morning based on all the you know news. We're never leaving it static. No, we were having some uh, discussions, debates on where Kelsey fits in the dynasty tight end rankings because that's a tough one. Because you know that you know that it, the years, you know, it could be one more year. The most entertaining version of the where does Kelsey slide in in dynasty is the Kelsey versus Pitts. <laughs> yeah. That to me has gone back and forth so many times over the years. I remember. Uh, when Pitts was coming out as a rookie, offering Travis Kelsey and a one for Kyle Pitts, and getting turned down. <laughs> Thank goodness, because we won some championships with Kelsey. There's a good Dynasty Life Cycle of Tight Ends article in the UDK Plus. You can check out all those resources for the draft kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can follow us on Twitter slash X at the FF Ballers. Jason's at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. Mike is at FF Hitman, and you can subscribe and watch the show. And we'd appreciate it if you click that bell. It'll let you know when we go live for special events. You won't miss any new episodes. That's youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We do have a quick question of the day, Jason. Off season trades question in a keeper league. Dustin in Tennessee wants to know he says, I'm a commissioner of a keeper league. We keep up to three players each. That is our league of record. We keep yep. three, three players. Uh, one of the guys in the league is asking if we can start doing off-season trades. I'm not sure how well that would work in a non-dynasty league. What do you all think about off-season trades in a keeper league? We do allow draft pick trades if that matters. Off-season trades are an awesome and important part of a keeper league to me. I think it's uh, it it's what makes it the best of both worlds because you get the off season transactions, and you also get in season real transactions. The waiver wires are hot and all of that. But there are yeah, and a redraft style draft. Yeah, there are there are you know 
some some ways where there's nuance, though. For instance, I know some leagues will allow trades before the keeper picks are locked in. So essentially, whatever you finished your roster with at the end of the year, you can be like, well, I'm going to make these trades so that I can make those keeper. I'm going to trade for a new keeper. That to me is dumb. That I don't like that at all. You're out on that. I'm out. I, I think that how you end the year should be like, now you've got to select who your keepers are. Once those are locked in and you're like, okay, going forward in now 2024, my team starts with th these three guys and these draft picks. Now that everybody's team knows what they have going forward, trade away. Some of the most fun we've had has been off-season trades. The way we do it is how you said it. We have a keeper selection uh, time of the year, which is uh, generally after the NFL draft, when the NFL draft is over, because that informs which players are maybe worthy of being kept. As soon as the NFL draft's over, we we lock in our keepers, and trading is available uh, throughout the offseason leading up into the draft. And in the middle of the draft, there's often probably, what, 10, 15 trades that happen in our league in the draft? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean they are such a nuisance <laughs> for me having to – Put the them, commission. put them through, but yes, they're fun. Well, but half of them are your own nuisance. Then. That's fair. You're causing your own problems. I, you know what? There's something easier about putting my own trade through the system. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that helps. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. I know because I've been reading the comments. I've I've read. Uh, people's uh, mentions on our our posts on Twitter, they want to know what you think about some of these moves. So before we talk about things that just happened, which we will, we'll talk about Keenan Allen and everything else, I have to know just like initial quick reactions or thoughts on the biggest moves that we talked about last week, which I'll just throw a couple out there. Okay. You tell me what your reaction was and where you are now. Saquon Barkley to Philly. Uh, I think that was fantastic. Uh, the The fantasy value of Saquon probably, to me, is the highest of all the running backs that change, changed teams. Obviously, goal line vulturing is something he's going to have to deal with. He does not get carries from the one, nor should he, when you have a 98% methodology of scoring a touchdown there. But he's finally on a high-powered offense. He's going to have... He should still score as many touchdowns as he was scoring for the Giants. And um, with a good offensive line, a good quarterback, good weapons, I, I didn't see anything last year that made me believe Saquon is losing it. His efficiency numbers, I don't think, were um, poor when factoring in the offensive line. So I'm I'm in on Barkley to the Eagles. Mike's favorite move, Derrick Henry to Baltimore. Uh, reason to be excited, Gus Edwards, 13 touchdowns last year. Yeah, it's it's almost it's a little bit the opposite. The offensive line should be better, although Baltimore did lose some pieces in this free agency cycle on the line. I don't think he will be a full true workhorse back. I I think that they will they will mix in multiple guys, but around the goal line, he should have a lot of touchdowns. Your former favorite. Austin Eckler went to Washington. Oh. So you had, you know, like uh, we have our famous trade that you rejected. <laughs> uh, uh, Saquon Barkley and Eckler moving in this offseason. So, yeah. Austin Eckler to Washington. Is this like the uh, the step before the Viking funeral here? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I, I, I hope the best for you, Eckler. You're an amazing, awesome, talented player and man. But I don't believe that your fantasy days are – going to be good again no confidence in cliff to just figure that out rebirth. I, no rebirth from cliff i do have no confidence in cliff nice uh what about the falcons rebirth in general you brought up kyle pitts earlier that's so kirk, fun kirk cousins darnell mooney rondale moore no no rondale moore uh, mm -mm. it helps no 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 kyle uh helps kirk no nah, not nah, not really okay um i do like darnell mooney darnell mooney's a good player Rondell Moore, I've never been convinced, is an actual good player. He's fast. He can break a play here or there. But Darnell Mooney, I think, is actually a very good player. But the real story is Drake London. 
you know, we've had so Did much Did you adjust time. him? Oh, yeah. I, I, let's compare. You're saying where he is in, in the Where's dynasty? Where is he on your dynasty startup rankings dynasty at starting. Okay. wide receiver? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I bet he's higher for you than he is for me. Based on you saying that, I think I'm going to agree. He is in my top 12. Oh, he's at 10 for me. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. He's so, at 10. Where is he at for you? He is at 11. Okay, so we have him. I mean, so that's. You were wrong. You were. No, I was dead wrong. wrong. But Drake London's at 10. And. He's 22 years old. The talent that you've seen on the field has been outstanding. And over the last couple of years, we've always been like, oh, what if this so and so could get a quarterback? What if this wide receiver could get a quarterback? It rarely happens. They always get new quarterbacks, but they're not good enough to actually you know, change the outcome uh, of the offense and of the yardage and touchdown opportunities. Kirk Cousins is absolutely good enough. Unless the, the Achilles is something he can't come back from, and I don't believe that, then – Kirk, Neither does the hundred million they gave him. Exa exactly. The, the, it does not seem like you know the the doctors are worried here, and it's not like he's a mobile quarterback that's losing what is his strength. His strength is mental processing and accuracy. So yeah, downfield throwing. He, what's the redraft like? What's the the finish? What's the ceiling for him? The ceiling for Drake London is probably like wide receiver three. See, that's I'm I'm between three and five. I believe that. We're ruin I mean, his ADP is shot. It's gone. I mean, it's done. He's gonna be the he's the so he was the wide receiver twenty six on underdog. He's already up to wide receiver fourteen. He will be this year's Garrett Wilson, where we had the excitement for what Garrett Wilson could be with Aaron Rodgers, which we didn't get to see last year. It's true. Now the question will be where is this year's Garrett Wilson? Who with you, Aaron Rodgers coming back? Who do you have? Hire Garrett Wilson or Drake London. Um, you're it's, talking about that the, for a dynasty startup rank. Garrett Wilson. I, I I have him ahead as well, but it is interesting because six and ten. Yeah, you know you've got a presume. I presume that you will have more years from Kirk Cousins than you will from Aaron Rodgers. Ironically, both coming off of Achilles. All right. Uh, Calvin Ridley took the money to go to the Titans. That was a bit of a shocker, right? We have Josh Jacobs at Green Bay. Not a destination we expected. Yeah, I will be so out on Calvin Ridley. So out. Like, I'm not he's off my board. Uh, that out? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely out on Calvin Ridley. Did you happen to catch the press conference? Yes. Where, where I, I like, mean, <laughs> why, I did, was, why did you choose the Titans? You're talking to... Tennessee at this point yeah this is your press conference of like welcome we paid you 92 million dollars tell us why you chose us uh, well I wanted to go back to Jacksonville yeah, yeah. but yeah, the money was I mean it was, it was like it was pretty... he skirted around it a little bit but you you could see right through it like he was a, a transparent window and you just go oh you only came here for the money and don't want to be here it was something to he even, say he wanted to be with the Jags. He even included like he, something along the lines of like, well, you know, there's good teams. And, and teams, teams that want to be good. Trying to be good. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I, I'm going to play for one trying to be good. Yeah. I mean, if I was a Titans fan, I'd be so upset watching that. All right, let's jump into the news that we have not talked about yet. I know Kyle's on the microphone. Oh, man. So he must have broke down. Started crying. The Chargers unloaded Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round draft pick, coming off a hundred and eight for twelve forty three and seven season, in which he only played thirteen games. If you remember, he didn't yeah. they didn't force him back at the end. So arguably his best season ever. And heads to Chicago, who is going to have a brand new quarterback. Caleb Williams will be the quarterback. DJ Moore, Cole Komet, and now Keenan Allen, the offense. Um, Kyle's mad at Greg Roman for shipping off all the weapons because they just want to run the football, but... He should be happy that they shipped him off because they just want to run the ball. You don't want to play for Greg Roman as a, as a wide receiver, but you also don't want to play for a rookie quarterback. Kyle should let us know where Keenan dropped in... 
or if he dropped in underdog. I imagine he did. And yeah, I, I'm so guessing about three or four spots. But I don't think he's going to be crazy because I think people had already adjusted for Greg Roman and, and the injuries. Is wide receiver 27 where he is now, Kyle? That's where he's at right now. Okay. Do you know where he was a week or two ago? Wide receiver 23. Four spots. Okay. So, in Chicago, is there hope there? Uh, I mean, we just watched no. C.J. Stroud turn two – Top fifteen performances out of Nico Collins and Tank Dell, unexpected. And, yeah, and that and that's what you're going to hear a lot. And it's 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 all I got. True, and it's fair because um, that did just happen. And Caleb Williams is coming in as a higher touted prospect than C.J. Stroud was. You have better weapons objectively. I don't care how good Tank Dell and Nico Collins were. Keenan Allen is a better wide receiver. You know, maybe not at the end of everyone's career, but certainly the the DJ Moore and Keenan Allen um, are an unbelievable one-two punch here. So, is there hope? Yes, because of you know you can point to other <laughs> things working. Oh, that didn't sound like enthusiasm. Though. It's not enthusiasm. I'm 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 uh, I'll be betting against the success of the. Chicago Bears wide receiver court from a fantasy perspective you know there's there uh you got Justin Herbert had a great rookie year CJ Stroud had a great rookie year they supported some good wide receivers there's a lot more quarterback <laughs> rookies that have played in the last decade than those two and those are like the only two you can ever point to so yes this next what Caleb Williams is supposed to be that guy but so is Trevor Lawrence so is a bunch he, of these players that get drafted, and usually rookie quarterbacks do not support multiple or even a single uh, top thirty-six wide receiver. Usually, I mean, what you, you, your bad end of the spectrum would be like decline to the tune of what happened to Allen Robinson when he moved teams at the end of his career. Um, Keen is thirty-one point eight years old, final year of his contract. We did a bunch of dirty math on the Footcast episode, just looking at target shares. Um, this was before he was traded, thinking about Greg Roman and whether he could still have success there. There was going to be worries in Los Angeles about Greg Roman. I'm not sure my worries are any different under Caleb Williams here. I think they're both – they were both going to be a down tick for yeah. Keenan Allen. It, it's just a matter of will the age push him so far back into drafts that he becomes a value? I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, and he, and he could. He's talented – what if you're staring down Keenan Allen in Chicago or Debo Samuel in San Francisco? No, there's no question it's Debo. What about uh, George Pickens now in Pittsburgh who has a chance with Russ? And is now, you know, with Deontay out of town. I, I, I... Mike Williams visiting that team, by the way. Man, as, a, as it stands right now, I think I'd go, I think I'd go George. Georgie Porgy. Cooper Cup. Oh, easy Cooper Cup. I on figured that one. as much. Yeah. I figured. All right, quick break. Back with some more. All right, so Keenan Allen moving to Chicago. This will help Caleb Williams. I mean, talk about a friend to a quarterback. Keenan Allen, always open, reliable, great hands underneath. And uh, Caleb Williams will have every shot to succeed. Those are three. I, I'm including Cole Komet. Like, those are three legit weapons mm -hmm. to start your career. This is it's definitely much more what Houston had versus what Bryce Young had to start their career last year. And so, um, and Caleb Williams, we'll see what he is. We'll see if it's Trevor Lawrence. We'll see if it's Patrick Mahomes. But, um, but this is not the only fallout for the Chargers. Mike Williams, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Austin Eckler. See you later. It's crazy. Keenan Allen, farewell. I mean, their depth chart right now, you know, they're running Quentin Johnston and Joshua Palmer out there. They're running Isaiah Spiller. I mean, they'll, they'll be drafting a rookie running back. That is a 40%. I'd bet my life on it. 40% of their wide receiver targets, 65% of their total targets are gone. It's, it's They won't even need that percent, though. It is. That percent's coming <laughs> off the total pass attempts. Right. It's a whole new world. And I think it's one that Chargers fans will enjoy and that fantasy football fans will not. It's why I, I like it makes sense to me. Like they will have the chance at five to draft a top tier neighbors, 
Adunze mm-hmm. situation. Um, potentially, but will they do it or Bowers? Potentially Marvin Harrison, in the sense that like there, you know, there, there's been all the rumors of uh, a team trading up. You know, the Vikings trading up to four for a quarterback. You could, you could in theory have quarterback, 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 quarterback go, and then Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. Uh, it, I think that one of the most fascinating things in this draft is whether or not they'll take a wide receiver because they have a desperate need for it. There will be a top-tier wide receiver, which is a premium position. Blake Corham, number and, five pick. No, I just can't wait for him to draft a defensive line. They might. Get an edge yeah, they in might. there or they something. They might. Um, but, yeah, I would not – I'd be shocked if they didn't spend a later pick on a running back. And they brought in Gus Edwards, which to me, I shared this with Mike, is very annoying. <laughs> Gus Edwards is not good enough to be the guy, and he's not bad enough to not be involved. Yeah, that's well said. All right. Um, Justin Fields. Jason, you had a, a, a tweet. We had a debate, a live debate. Um, Justin Fields was traded to the Steelers. Finally shipped out of Chicago. No more distraction. About three minutes after they got Russell Wilson. Yeah, a conditional 2025 sixth-round pick will become a fourth-round pick if Justin Fields plays more than 51% of the offensive snaps. Oh, my gosh. All the stuff that Chicago is trying to – they're trying harder than I've ever seen any team try to be like, we did this for Justin. <laughs> like they, they want everyone to know they're, they are just – they're just being so good to Justin Fields. What? No, you're they want not. Caleb Williams to know how nice they'll be when they ship him out. Yeah, I mean, come on. They, you that's, literally you're have referring a, to a report that they said that they had higher draft compensation offered to them. However, they chose to give him a better shot than be a backup for a super established quarterback. Well, not only that, but the, I mean, it, it wasn't just that report. They've they've talked about doing right by Justin in this process the whole time. But I love that they trade him in a way that incentivizes that team to make sure he stays the backup. Because if he doesn't stay the backup. It's going to cost you more. You're so nice to him. <laughs> That's so kind, <laughs> Chicago. Uh, it, it, it is actively in Chicago's interest for him not to play. He will play. Um, he will be the backup. He, he that's that's already been reported. This isn't you know he's coming in to even compete for the starting job, but he's going to play. And I, the reason he's going to play is because his the starter is Russell Wilson. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's just. It's going to happen. And I will say this. I am happy for Fields to go to a franchise that Fields has some talent and he has major problems. This the 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 way that he takes sacks and holds on to the ball and accuracy issues. Yeah, I mean sometimes he makes a great throw, sometimes he doesn't. I mean, he is I mean the NFL just showed you Yeah. Yep. what they believe. Forget fantasy. This is also, if I can just get on the soapbox for a second, this is the perfect, most perfect example we've ever had of why I think fantasy football scoring is broken for quarterbacks and should be changed. Because Justin Fields is not a great quarterback, but Justin Fields is a great fantasy quarterback, and those two things shouldn't be the same. They should not. You, The great quarterbacks that you would want your team to play, that you would want to draft, that you would want to sign for extensions, those are who should be scoring the most they fantasy points. They shouldn't be cheat codes. Yeah, it's just a cheat like code. Like a cheat code tells you that, it's a that, cheat. that's not normal. Yeah. Like that's not how normal winning happens. Yeah, the, the entire NFL just lets you know that Justin Fields is worth a six-round pick. That maybe becomes a fourth. Yeah. that I mean, to credit to the Steelers who, you know, I, I didn't know what they were going to do this offseason. I thought they might just sit on their hands again and, like, people talking about Mason Rudolph could come back and Kenny Pickett. Like, you did what you sh you should have done. It was wonderful. Which was – They're a well-run franchise. That's why I'm happy Fields is there because I think if 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 you can mold him and take the talents that he does have, the the you know, he's got some trump cards there, a athleticism, uh, and he's he's got ability – he needs to be brought along, and maybe he can. For it's the just Steelers. it's hard because you know Big Ben was special, and then we don't have a proven track record of bringing anybody else along there in Pittsburgh under the current regime. But Russ will start. Fields the backup. They reworked their entire quarterback room for very little money. They sent Kenny Pickett out the door, traded to his hometown Eagles. Uh, the Eagles got Pickett and a fourth. Steelers get a uh, third. And then a couple of sevenths in 2025. Cardinals swapped Rondell Moore for Desmond Ritter. 
everybody out there that said, what do you think of this move? I don't think about it at all. The Desmond Ritter Rondell Moore? No, I choose not to think of that move. No. What move? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's how much I, I care. Uh, but we have um, we have a lot of quarterback turnover that's happened. Ten again, which is when I say again, basically every year there are at least ten starters in week one who are not starters the next year. This year we got another ten. The last six years running, there's been at least ten. The average is 11.3 quarterbacks every season. The started in week one, the next year. Does it change any of your dynasty super flex? It should. It should make you less confident. That I mean, these, Jimmy Garoppolo probably looked like a pretty good player to have. That these middling guys, like obviously the the value in a super flex of the top tier guys is is monumental, which is why those first six, seven picks are always quarterback Probably always should be quarterback. Patrick Mahomes isn't going anywhere. Josh Allen's not going anywhere till he's done. Um, but when you've got all these other, and and it's interesting in rookie picks too, including you know the guys this year. You you look at uh, Kenny Pickett and Mac Jones and these young players. Sam Howell, who was a starter this whole year, it's like they're 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 basically done. Uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll play again. Maybe I'm sure they'll have more starts in their career when injuries to the starters happen. But like for fantasy superflex startups or even rookie drafts, the top of these drafts are so loaded with quarterbacks. And I think sometimes in those superflex leagues, people are making a mistake to do that. All those quarterbacks you talked about, they just entered their like uh, Marcus Mariota, the backup phase. They entered their, you know, uh, they're not going to be looked upon to be a starter. They may fill in from time to time. Sam Howell got traded to the Seahawks. I don't yes. think we talked about that on the show, but it was uh, the Seahawks got Sam Howell in a fourth and a sixth to the Commanders for a third and a fifth. Oh. <laughs> Hollywood Brown. One. Hollywood. You got oh, it. Yeah, where's the drop? Of, yeah, where's the drop? You want me to hit it? We got oh, it. come on, Al. Yeah. Come I on, Al. One time. <laughs> Hollywood Brown, one-year deal with the Kansas City Chiefs. Prove it. I wonder if that Hollywood drop was different than this one. Hollywood. Nope. I thought we had one in a Cardinal uniform. We definitely had were, one in a Were Cardinal. those years so bad that we just blocked? We're going back to Ravens uniform on the drop? Exactly. Okay. I and, mean, then, and now we we need to update it again. Yeah, I, they were bad, by the way. Do you care? I mean, obviously you care a little bit, right? Ho Hollywood has been a fantasy producer. He's he's had a, a decent career. He's he's definitely been a relevant wide Do receiver. Do I care? I did not expect that question. Yes. I believe that Hollywood Brown is a pretty talented receiver. Um I'm not a fool. I think I would mostly agree. Um I don't I don't want to be drawn in under the Kadarius Tony and MBS and Sky Moore and Justin Watson and look, we know that Mahomes can win without you mm -hmm. if if your name's not Travis Kelsey. But I am I'm curious. He's only twenty six years old. I mean, one year shot yeah. in Kansas City. The the Chiefs, if you listen to episodes earlier this offseason, they have not been throwing the ball deep as much over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, the, the Chiefs are pretty much always now going to be facing, you know, the 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 two safeties back there. They, they don't want to be beat by Mahomes over the top, and Mahomes is like, all right, I'll beat you under, you know, under the, under the table. Under the top? <laughs> under the table, just uh, easy peasy. Hollywood, to me, is a guy that I'm fine with him in, in best ball, and, and you, there's obviously a path towards a, a breakout fantasy season, but if I had to guess... I would feel like 808 yeah, at the end of the I year mean, on like 65 receptions, something like that. He was not that good in Arizona. No, no, he wasn't. He was hurt he, a lot. I was going to say he missed a lot of time, and the heel issue this last season was was bad. So health could be part of it because he he had, I mean, he had a 90 reception, thousand yard season with the Ravens, and so now you get Patrick Mahomes, and there's there's a path. He's also not. He's only 26 years old. He's not past his prime or done 
If he's healthy, he could be a good weapon here. But the way that the offense has worked for the Chiefs, I don't expect prolific, you know, counting stats at the end Does of the season. Does it hurt your view of Rashi Rice at all? Not too much because my view with Rashi Rice was always – like I, I presumed – that the 32nd pick in this year's draft was a wide receiver. Every mock draft you see is like, Still could oh, be. it's Troy Franklin, Xavier, Xavier Worthy. It's, and it, it could be, but now I don't think it will be. And so I'm just replacing that rookie with Hollywood in my mind. That makes sense. Yeah, and the difference between Hollywood and you know Tony and MBS is that he's not just some player with like potential that we've never seen take over a game. Like Hollywood's had – big time games do you care more about this signing though curtis samuel three-year 24 million dollar deal with the buffalo bills 15 million guaranteed i what a stupid what a stupid weird yeah i do i care more about i curtis think i samuel care more about curtis samuel than buffalo. hollywood brown i'm the, kind of in on this move i, I kind of are you there I, too? I am too i, I didn't did know it. this i thought for sure you would not be in on this samuel bros i I am kind of in on this. I mean, Gabe Davis has been relevant. Obviously, you got Josh Allen. Stephon Diggs was disappearing. They need another wide receiver as desperately as any team. He's so multi-talented. He can take snaps out of the backfield if you need him to. He can play the slot. He can challenge you downfield. And and he got some money. I mean, three-year, $24 million deal, $15 million guaranteed. They are bringing him in to be an important part of an important offense. Remember how many games last year we were like, ah, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, here we go. And then it would just be Curtis Samuel. Yeah. He's a pretty talented dude. And this is going to be the best quarterback he's had an opportunity to play with, I think. You think? Uh, well, yeah, I, I was going back to like Cam <laughs> Newton, but Cam was not like prime Cam, I think, during the Samuel, Samuel injury years. So like Sam Howell. Right. That's the closer debate. Right, yeah. yeah. Um. Joe Mixon, after the trade, which I didn't get your reaction to that, but talk about a roller coaster for dynasty Mixon managers. Goes from, oh, no, he might not play. Oh, he's the star. Oh, three-year extension. Now he's the Texans dude. It really was. They're going to cut Joe Mixon and replace him with Moss. Nope, they're not cutting him. They're trading him. Extended. It was, it was crazy. 27 years old. Number. Do you know the number he was last year? What he finished at running back? Because I, I asked do, Mike I this not. question. Well, take a guess. Eight? I think Mike guessed eight. It was five. Oh, wow. He was the RB5 last year. Texans team that can run the football. Singletary looked good there, despite the offensive line issues. If they can solidify that line. There was almost no running back at the end of last year that impressed me more than Joe Mixon. When he was – I mentioned it in one of our early offseason episodes, how, how much he reminded me of James Conner at the end of the previous season for the Cardinals where yes. you don't have your starting quarterback and you're you're playing with a backup and the team knows you're going to get the ball and you're just picking up extra yards on every single play. And and he really did well down the stretch um, more than I thought he could or should have done. And so getting a three-year extension – being part of an awesome offense, uh, I I I like I here's, like this landing spot. Here's my one concern. Okay, we were kind of okay with Mix in the last year or two because we knew he'd get everything. Uh, he is he had eighty point eight percent of the rush share uh -huh. in Cincinnati. His consistency rank was a B, 70% of the time over 10.5 fantasy points. He had 21 red zone attempts. To me, he's going to have to do more around the goal line in Houston to make up for probably sharing a little bit more work with Damian Pierce. Do you think that will be the case, or do you think? I don't think that'll be the case. Devin Singletary's. Uh, I don't think it'll be the case. So, uh, D Damian Pierce is not this regime's dude. Down the stretch, Damian Pierce's snap counts were 14%, 5%, 15%, 20%. That's the, that's not even a healthy backup. That's just, you know, a give a guy a breather type of snaps. Yeah, on the year he was 46% of the rush share, but over the back half of the yeah, year. Yeah, because at the beginning of the year, they're like, Damian yeah. Pierce is going to be our guy. 16% of snaps over the last seven games. Yeah, exactly. The beginning of the year before their bye week, he was up at 50% of the snaps, 49% of the snaps. We, we like to be accurate here. 
And then they were like, D -d -d he's not getting it done. And so then they switched to Singletary, and then they trade for Mixon and extend him. Mixon's their guy. Right, right. No, the extension proves it. Uh, Michael Gallup designated as a post-June 1st release. Boy, they got – did they get literally nothing for that <laughs> yes. extension for Michael Gallup? Yeah, pretty much. That was post-injury, right? Correct. He was already – he, he, he got had hurt. his ACL, yeah. and they're like, no, we made the right – decision with Amari Cooper will prove it to you and then um 34 receptions and 400 yards later he's on the he, so they void a third he would have made 13 million dollars and then 15 million dollars is it Kyle is that money gone off the books that's not money owed right they have to pay him nine and a half million and then 8.7 next year like they're they paid a ton of money for him to not play for them I mean, I know the answer will be more than this, but if you told me he caught five passes from the time he, he, he got the contract, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds about right. Five passes worth of impact. That's a wild one. And he was never the same. No, he wasn't, but he'll sign somewhere and people will draft him. Um. All right, uh, let's take another quick break. We've got more news to talk about. We've got some mailbag questions. Be right back. All right, we did have Minnesota trading to get the 23rd pick. Jason, did you see that move? I did see that. I have. Uh, I, I hope I've seen all the moves here, but yes. Um, the presumption from a lot of pundits out there are this is a move in order to move up for yeah, have a some, quarterback. Have some ammo. Yeah, a lot of people are – Denver's the, at 12, mm -hmm. Minnesota's at 11, and I feel like those two teams could fight over J.J. McCarthy. For sure. Uh, and and how high they're able to, you know, rise up is is a question. Do you want to get to the Cardinals at four? Do you want to try to? I saw the funniest thing. Uh, um, man, I wish I could give credit. Um, if see if you can find the 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 tweet, Kyle. But someone had a great uh thought. So basically, KJ Osborne signed a one year one year deal with the Patriots. Yes, that just broke. Yes. Um, that move basically assured the Vikings of a third round uh a compensatory compensatory pick it, with the with the way that the math and the free agency went uh this offseason and so it was like could the Patriots have conspired we will sign him so you can get an extra third so we can have your third and take oh and my trade gosh. the number three pick back to the 12 with the hall and and it's okay because we basically manufactured you another third round pick. That's and they <laughs> paid for gonna, it. They paid yeah, for it. It's not gonna That's happen, really funny. Um, I loved the concept. Yeah, it'll be interesting. They're going to need a lot more than eleven and twenty three to move up to three. That's for sure. Uh, AJ Dillon one year deal back with the Packers. Uh, Five point three a carry. Four point three a carry. Four point one a carry. Three point four a carry. At this rate. Uh, he could be going backwards soon. Yeah, but Josh Jacobs, I think, has also been going backwards. We didn't talk about that. I mean, you give me you your, give me your impression here. I am. They not, they obviously made the move. They decided to go with youth over paying Aaron Jones. I don't, I don't blame the Packers for making the move. I think it's a a decent financial and wise move for the Packers. But I do believe Josh Jacobs will be a worse running back this coming year for the Packers than Aaron Jones was this past year. I do think Aaron Jones is a better runner. I just – durability has been an issue. Um, all right, anything else? Oh, Lions re-signed Donovan Peoples-Jones. Rams signed Jimmy G. Adam Troutman re-signed. Oh, Mike's not here. Jay Grizz, big fan. Yeah, he is my tight end 51 in uh, <laughs> startup break because I found that out today. So – Congrats. You didn't move him up Trauma. after no, no, this no. signing? No, but I didn't move him down either. So he 51, stayed right huh? there at 51. So in your four tight end leagues, he's relevant. Yeah, yep. uh, Jason, you you got the uh, – Oh, you am I, you am got I the, doing the mailbag here? You got here? the pipes? <laughs> mailbag. Mailbag. Not, okay. Not good. Not good. Not good. No, but I, I think it was a lack of enthusiasm that hurt you. I tried to pull back. I noticed. And yeah, it, we could tell. And it didn't work. So, I won't put you on the spot again. I just yes, next time I want more effort. All right. And yes, I will. Mike will probably be gone on Thursday, so Okay. I get Maybe we'll pick one of, of the deucers. You know, you know who won't have that shot to do it? 
is Brooks. Oh. So maybe Brooks, maybe a Brooks oh. mailbag on Thursday. Oh, maybe. Stay you tuned. Wanna, Brooks, you want to get in front of the mirror and practice? We'll see what happens. We'll see. All right. This uh, just in. Brooks, sick on Thursday. <laughs> All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Did you forget the, our website? No, 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 no. Okay, good. Um, visit the website and click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. All right, uh, we've got some voicemail questions. Jason, you ready? I am. Howdy, ballers. I'm JP from Virginia. I'm 11 years old. I need some help with my running back keepers. I'm already keeping Kyrie Kill, so I've only got one spot between Jameer Gibbs and Saquon Barkley. Please help me. I, I lost my, my the title game last year to my mom. P.S. They had a Jay Grizz for me. Okay, Jay Grizz says hi back. I think that was Does was, he? That J, was it JP? Is that the name? Yeah, JP. JP. Um, Thank you. Gibbs and Saquon. That's Gibbs, a tough one. It, it really is. Um, I, I I think I'd go Gibbs. I will go Gibbs as well. Gibbs was the running back 10 this last year despite missing two games and being a rookie. Uh, I I like – What if you were a big Eagles fan? Well, sure. I mean, if you – I think it's close enough. Is it that close? It is close enough. It's close enough where if it's like I love the Eagles, we got our guy Saquon. I, I, I don't – I think there is a – I think JP's a big Eagles fan. I think there's a compelling argument that could be made for either one of these guys over the other. For me, I usually side on youth and explosiveness. I think um, Saquon is still an explosive athlete, uh, an above-average running back, but he's not. he doesn't have the juice that Jameer Gibbs has right now. He will have, I believe, more of the role, and it's ironic because both of these guys aren't really projected to be the goal line back, right? David Montgomery and Jalen Hurts are their team's goal line back. I think there's some hope in Philadelphia that – or not in Philadelphia, but hope in the fantasy community that Saquon will get more goal line. One, because he's good at it. Two, because Jason Kelsey's retired. Sure, the touch and push so might, the not, tush work push might well. not be as successful. I, I think, you know, inside the five, Saquon will get work. But that is outside the one. Right. It's right. like if you're at the one, it is, is going to be the touch. Push. Any advice for JP, uh, 11 years old, but lost to his mom in the title game? Take Keep Gibbs. Is that more chores? Win. I mean, what is the... Um, more chores. I mean, do you get punished? Well, is that advice for the mother? I mean, no, the I mother just, should I'm definitely give him more chores for winning. Hold that over That's him. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Well, you what you want to do, if you go into the championship game like against a family member, you've got to put something on the line. You got to – and we're not talking money. We're talking stuff like chores, yeah, the tasks. Kid, if Maybe this next year like – Foot if, massage. If you beat mom, she'll do your homework for you. Oh, okay. So like cheating. For a, for a week. Perfect. Great. Is that cheating? Yeah. 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 I don't think the school wants me doing my child's homework for them. I think if they they would say what this a, or this what essay a goody, was what a goody two shoes. This essay was excellent. All right. Um I know it wasn't your son's. The Chat GPT, you know that. Right. That's all I meant by doing their homework. I'd plug it into Chat GPT. Uh Jalen, which part of the NFL offseason do you like more prefer talking about? Free agency or the NFL draft? Draft. Uh, yeah, I guess I agree with that. Although Love they're both, both very fun. Yeah. The news breaking for free agency is exhilarating. Yeah. I think it's the fact that with, it's just time, right? Like free agency is, it's like a week, a week of awesomeness, but the draft, you've got a month of scouting, a month of preparation, and then you get a couple days of just all the answers. And then afterwards, you, you then you start talking about it again. You're not going to like this next one. Okay. Don't read it. <laughs> go to the go to the following question. No, Mr. Underscore Feeney 104, love the show. What do you think about the proposed 18-game schedule and the fantasy impact? Because we are getting 18 at some point. For sure. I, I don't have any problem with it. When the new CBA was signed several years ago, we knew then. I think we forget now that we knew then, but we knew it was going to go to 17 and then 18. So this has always been the presumption. We can have one more uh, game. Everyone will have 1,000-yard seasons. That's the funniest because that doesn't get out of your psyche. No, no. Oh, Everybody you that gets 1,000 yards. yards, you got a whole extra game now. 
17 games and it was still still it's a benchmark. Yeah, that will always be the benchmark because it's such a run. That's 55 yards a game. 55! At 17 or 18 games? At 18. Yeah. That's not a lot. No, if you had if you're like, "Hey, my running back went out and had 55 10 yards." 10 for 55 and no touchdowns. Be like, "Thousand yard runner." Yeah, that guy sucks. Um Tyler in Pittsburgh. You will be selecting just one player to keep from last season. Oh, we will be selecting just one player to keep from last season in our league. Should the draft order be randomized before or after our keeper selections are finalized? If it's random, why would it make a difference? Am I misunderstanding? I the don't question? understand the question. We will be selecting just one player to keep from last season. Okay. So one keeper in our league. Got it. Should the draft order be randomized before or after our keeper select? Okay. So now I do understand. Oh, okay. I do understand. Yeah, we're d- we're dumb. Um, just wants to know, like, do you make the keeper selections first or after the draft order, which is randomized? Because that might determine what keepers you'd pick. Um, I think you should pick them first and then randomize it. Yeah, I would lean that way as well. We did it, Jay. We got it. Here's another voicemail question. Hey, what it do do, ballers? This is the biggest poopy loser face of the Tokwane Dynasty League, a.k.a. Wallaby here, and here's my question. What player are you most scared about losing dynasty value from the NFL draft? Thanks, guys. Appreciate the show. There's so much poop in that. Um, Which player are you most scared of losing dynasty value in the NFL draft? Uh, do you have somebody that pops to the top of your mind? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to browse a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, it's funny because I, I could see a world where it happens, but I don't believe it's going to happen. So I don't have fear. I like, like Kyron Williams uh, sure. is the type of player where there's not a lot to the depth chart. And if that team decided they needed to take a high end running back and they take the first running back off the board. Um, that would that would answer this question. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so I'm not really afraid of it. Um, other than that's part of the equation is whether you think these teams are going to lean in on those. There's been s- several big impact free agency situations. I mean, to me, Jordan Addison dropped down a few rungs with the move of Kirk Cousins. Tr- he's a deep threat. Um, he reminds me a lot of Darnell Mooney type of talent and when you don't have accuracy throwing it deep it might hurt you um you know is your view on Justin Jefferson going to change in a dynasty league if they don't draft a quarterback if you go into the season with Sam Darnold on a one year deal i i think it's a fair question you brought up i i i mentioned it on the show cuz you had talked about it there were you know the Juju Smith Schusters of the world that were the number one pick in dynasty drafts that just you know it evaporated Oh yeah, I mean we we've, we've had that several times. It's funny because like it's hard now to think of Michael Thomas as what he was. Michael Thomas was super young, a superstar, the number one fantasy finisher at wide receiver with what appeared to be a decade left of value. He got injured. Okay, well whatever. Everybody you know people get injured. His career's done. He never once he got that injury, he never had a fantasy relevant season again. He now is cut and does not have a team. It's almost unthinkable to say like Justin Jefferson. It, it just sounds stupid if I'm like, well, Justin Jefferson's done. No, he's not done. He's so good. But it's like, okay, but this is the NFL. And crazy things like that happen. It was it would have been just as impossible to think about that for Michael Thomas. Couldn't come back from this injury, got re-aggravated. Couple years go by, didn't have the right quarterback anymore. Drew Brees was gone. It's like, okay, Justin Jefferson got injured. He doesn't have Kirk Cousins anymore. If he gets injured again this year and the quarterback issue is a problem and they draft the wrong guy or don't have a solution, maybe he's all of a sudden close to done. And I, I, I'm not going to say that. You couldn't say that. He's just too talented. But that was the thought process with Juju at one point. That was the thought process with Michael Thomas at one point. So when you do think that these guys at the very top of your dynasty, you know, your Jamar Chase and – CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson are just invincible decade-long assets. It is not a guarantee. I have three names that I think could be impacted by NFL draft picks in a significant way. One. Are any of them George Pickens? George Pickens is the first one. That's my answer to Yeah, because if they took a high-profile wide receiver. Which they need to. It changes. Well, they're visiting with Mike Williams. We'll see. 
Um, so Pickens is one. Stephon Diggs, after the Samuel signing, if they happen to draft another one. And Diggs is already tweeting random things again. And I'm going to throw one more out there that, that is interesting. Nick Chubb. Oh, okay. I, I see that a lot. Because you, Cause you want the depth chart to stay his. Right. To have him allowed to come back on yeah. a good timeline. If they usurp him with talent, he might not have the opportunity that he would require coming off of a brutal injury. That's a good name. Yeah, that I really – I struggle with him on my dynasty rankings right now mm -hmm. on where to put him. YouTube question from Swaghawks says, how do I get my five-year-old into football? Um, can you go to my camera right here? There's this fine book over here. It's called <laughs> My Football Family, and you can pick that up. And then if they read it ten times, they will become an NFL player. Man. Yeah. I should have read – is there a – is there an age limit, or can you do that at any, any age? Any up age. to five. Oh, so you better get on it. You yeah, got a five year old hurt. now. Don't no. wait till next year. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought that like our kids all played fantasy really young, having done this for a job. It, you know, my my son probably really started getting into it at seven or eight when he enjoyed just watching games with me. You know, one of them doesn't enjoy it at all. Mm -hmm. it, it's just the way it goes. So. I think it's the same answer for any hobby. <laughs> right. If you do it with the kid and play football and watch football and they like it, then they'll probably get into it. Right. You can't always make kids like certain things. No. No. All right. Uh, keeper question. Chris wants to know keep two. Jason Bijan. Yeah, I'll keep one. The Bijan. Puka. I'll keep two. That was easy. Bijan and Puka. Kyron. Oh, come on, man. Full PPR. Ugh. Give me, the, gonna, give me the, running the running backs. backs. Yep. Give me the running backs. Yep, I'm with you. And uh, Matt in New York, hey, Ballers Dynasty question, would you rather have Kyle Pitts in the 202 or Garrett Wilson? Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. All right, on Thursday, we're going to cover biggest free agency winners and losers unless like 30 more things happen, and then we'll just talk about those, and then we'll talk about winners and losers. But it's been a wild, crazy off season. We've already got some dynasty trades flying around in our leagues, and, uh, I mean, some trade offers that have just been just gross, just awful. But that's fantasy football. Dynasty I find to be the most difficult to trade because people's viewpoint on it is so – the spectrum is so wide on what they think a player will be long-term, short-term. You don't know if the person that you think is building for the future is building for the present. You don't know if the person building for the present is actually going to rebuild. You never know what the opponent's doing. Yeah, but oftentimes you look at their team and you know what they should do. You do, but they don't. I mean, they like, just... Like, why are you not taking this yeah. deal? You're not making the playoffs. And then they're like, I'm making the playoffs. And then they don't take the deal. Okay. And then they don't make the yeah. playoffs. And you laugh in their face. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. All right, that'll do it for today. It was hypothetical. Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Back with you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.